So the eight ways, um, we're going to go through those here in a second, but I want to point out this quote. John Wooden, a uh, basketball coach for UCLA for many, many, many years. When he passed away, this quote was in the USA Today, and I thought, oh, that's a great one. Never mistake activity for achievement. Because right, we have, these, we have those, uh, those warriors out there that get everything done, right? Go give it to John. John will get it done. He knows where that is. The problem is, John, it's in John's head, and he's running around getting it done. He's very busy, and he gets it done, and what do we do? We pat him on the back, say, hey, attaboy, way to go. Way to go. You got it done. And all he's doing is he's not improving the process. He's actually hurting the process. There may have been a crisis there, but being active doesn't mean we're actually achieving something. We may be just spinning our wheels in mud. So the eight wastes that we have out there is motion. You're looking around, running around for stuff. Waiting time. Our patients see that, right? Wasted transportation. Moving patients. Moving files. Moving uh, uh, specimens. Any of that falls under that category. Rework. X-ray techs. How many are, have x-rays being done in their office? A few of you. Are your x-rays standardized across physicians? New patient, left knee, gets all the same one. Are your x-ray, you're not, you're not doing film anymore, are you digital? Okay. Digital? No? Okay. Um, okay, so then you do this. I can't help you on this one. No, it, but it's, uh, we did this in an ortho office. We, they have uh, nine, ten ortho docs. And the, a new left knee was different for every one of those physicians. It drove the x-ray techs next, nuts because they were going, which one is this? Who am I doing it for? And to make it worse, they all had similar last names. So really, I'm doctor this. And it's like, oh, man, really? So then you have excess processing, writing things down in many different forms, overproduction, too much paperwork. We, we assessed an open MRI, and, and it's a very unique um, situation with an open MRI, right? You have individuals that are anxiety-ridden, don't want to be in that little tunnel, or people that are too large to be in, in, in the tunnel, and so they come to the open MRI. And so they have a higher rate of no-shows just because of the nature of the business. Well, they, they, had, they thought it was all the paperwork, so we started looking at the paperwork, and they laid it out, and they had 15 sheets of, for um, new patient information. So what, do you, what, are, what are they all for? Well, this one, it goes to billing, uh, corporate billing. I said, well, what does it do? Well, we're not quite sure. We believe we started collecting that data in about 1985. There was a grad student that was doing a, a dissertation, and they needed this information. Do you still need it? Oh, we don't know. We still collect it, though. We just send it to Billing. Somebody call Billing and find out if we really need this. Billing's like, no, we just throw it away. OK, good, gone. Um, excess inventory, your supplies. Where, you know, ha do you have a grip on how much you spend on supplies and where they're at and how they're stored in rotation of supplies and how much gets, is expired? There's a huge cost savings there. We did a uh, surgery center uh, in Canada uh, or between uh, uh, right before Christmas. And we cleaned out these seven or eight uh, surgical suites. Sutures galore. They had sutures because, well, Dr. So-and-so used, when's the last time Dr. So-and-so uh, had surgery here? Well, well, it's been a while. And I knew there was something hiding there. So, so what's a while mean? Well, I think 1997. I actually, I don't even know if he's practicing anymore. So we might be able to stop ordering those sutures, which are stockpiling in the back room now. So, and then the last one is wasted knowledge. That's, that's you, that's your staff. Get them together, ask them the questions. They know what's wrong. You'd be amazed at what your front line know and haven't told you. Yes, I'm a Packer fan. I grew up in Green Bay, thank you very much. That, yeah, I thought that'd help you out. But uh, I saw this quote, and this, is, this truly is a lean quote. Gentlemen, we are going to relentlessly chase perfection, knowing full well we will not catch it because nothing is perfect. But we are going to relentlessly chase it because in the process we will catch excellence. I am not remotely interested in just being good. And that's, and that's a great quote whether you are a Packer fan or not. But it's a, the, the key takeaway there is you can start a project 
and not expect to be 100% correct. And that's, I think, we, we drop our projects because, oh, it's not going to be perfect. I'm going to get yelled at because it, it didn't reach that attainable goal of we're going to fix this by 99.9%. .9%. Well, you'll never get there. But if, it's going to, if you're going to cut it in half on your first cut through, for first process improvement project, by all means, go do it. Because you're now, you cut that in half, now all of a sudden you'll come back in a couple months, you'll cut that in half. So it's, it's okay to not get 100% accurate on your first project. 